Hi, my name is Mark Gillen. Welcome to the video tutorial for fractions, specifically adding fractions. What we'll do in a second is a wee reminder, and at the end we'll do a wee summary. If you're looking for more to do with fractions and you're looking, wanting to link that in with percentages and the, the decimalisation, then there are separate video tutorials for that as well. Okay, right, let's get started. So a wee reminder as to fractions, and um, what we have is an illustration here where I've put in a whole of a pie or, or a share, and this is what fractions are. It's a part of, so we've got the whole, which is one of one, we've got the halves, and then we've half them again, made them quarters, and half them again, and made them eighths. Okay, so let's have a wee look. Um, so the fractions illustrate the part of, just like I was saying there, the top number is your numerator. So that tells you how many of the parts there are. The bottom number is the denominator, which tells you how many in total parts. So for example, a quarter is a part, and one part of four, so it's one part of 4, 1 over 4, which is your fraction there. So you've got your numerator, which is telling you it's one part, and the denominator that's telling you there are a total of four portions. And three quarters would obviously then be three parts of four. In other words, it would be a quarter plus a quarter plus a quarter. Now, when we're looking at adding fractions together, you'll see that when the denominator is the same, it's the numerator that changes. So the, the total number of parts hasn't changed. It's just the number of the parts thereof. So you'll see there that that was quite straightforward. The only thing that changes sometimes is when we start then going into whole numbers and then additional parts. However, keeping this straightforward just now, and what we're saying is adding two together, so you add a, a quarter plus a quarter will give you two quarters, which is a half, obviously. Maybe with three quarters added together, so it's a quarter plus a quarter plus a quarter. The number of quarters remains the same, so there's a total of four parts. It's been split into four, and there's three of those parts of four. Okay, enough for the reminder there, and uh, just reinforcing. So let's have a wee look at the numerator and the denominator, so a wee reminder of those two. So three quarters, for example, so the three is the numerator, and the four at the bottom there is the denominator. Um, so the number of parts is the numerator, and the total parts is the denominator. So adding two fractions together that don't have the same denominator, that's slightly different to straightforward adding two um, fractions together that do have the same denominator. So let's have a wee look at this. So when we're adding, we know that adding fractions together with the same denominator, we, we've already spoken a little bit about that. I'm going to give you an example here. One, we'll get a quarter plus a quarter equals two quarters. And that's quite straightforward. So we just add the numbers together, don't we? And the numerator changes. We add the two numbers together on the numerator and the denominator, being at the bottom there, remains the same. However, what about adding two fractions containing different denominators? So for example, a third plus two fifths. Hmm, slightly different, isn't it? Well, if we look at that again, we've considered there's two steps to this operation that we're going to work on. So we consider the sum, that's the first thing we do anyway. We consider the sum. And we've got a third plus two fifths. So step one is we find the answer to the numerator. Step two is the answer to the denominator. That gives us the answer. So just the two steps there. So the first thing we do is we consider the sum. Step one, answer the numerator. Step two, the denominator. And then we have the answer. So let's have a wee look at the sum. So we consider the sum. So it's a third plus two fifths in this instance. But it could be anything. 
So adding two fractions of a different denominator. So that's us considering the sum. Now for step one. What we have is a third. And we want to add that to two fifths. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the numerator on one side with the denominator on the other. And then, likewise, the other numerator. So what would happen in this one here is we would multiply the first numerator by the second denominator. So it's 1 times 5, which you know, is 5. Then what we're going to do is we'll multiply the other numerator by the other the, the other first denominator. So it's just the opposites. You'll see there's a nice wee cross there. So it's then 2 is the numerator on the other, the other one. So it's 2 by the denominator on that. So it's 2 times 3, which equals 6. Then just add them together. So, of course, it's 11. So, this will form the answer to the numerator. That's step one. Now, we'll look at step two. So, that's the numerator, answer numerator. Step one done. Step two is going to be the denominator. So, what we do is we take the two fractions again to work on them, and we multiply the two denominators together now. We're working on the denominator. So 3 times 5 gives us 15. So this will form the answer for the denominator. So that is step 2. And that's all we do is we just put it all together. So what we had was the third plus the two fifths, the equals... 11 over 15. So it was the step one that got us the numerator. Step two got us the denominator. Just a wee reminder there of the two steps. So step one was multiply the numerators by the denominators opposite. Step two is you just multiply the two denominators together. Okay, let's put it all together and we'll have a wee think here. That's the everything that we've learnt. So a wee summary of everything. So what we do is we think about the sum. We consider the sum. Step one, we multiply each of the numerators by the dom denominators opposite. Step two, we just multiply the two denominators together. And then... That forms your answer. So the answer from step one gives you the numerator. Step two gives you the answer for the denominator. Do you always rewind? Fast forward again, rewind, pause. You can have great fun with these videos. Might not be able to do that with me in the classroom, although sometimes you can maybe pause me. It's a little bit more difficult to fast forward than rewinding. Anyway, I'm I'm glad that you've joined me for this video tutorial. I hope you found it useful and uh, look out for some more. Thanks very much. Bye for now.